Hey guys, and welcome back to the Quad Down Podcast. I'm your host, Fly to Taylor, and I'm joined, as always, by KI Coaster Guy. How are you, Larry? I'm doing fantastic. We had a great day yesterday. We did. Oh no, I didn't mean to restart that. Oh no. No, that's okay. Just let it go. Let it play the whole episode. We'll just start it, like, ten, restart the episode multiple times. Um, uh, you, you hit it that time. I did. You oh my gosh, it. the one time Josh isn't here? Josh <laughs> isn't here. Yes. Josh is uh Josh is gonna be absent for a few weeks, getting uh getting ready for a wedding, and he's gonna be having a honeymoon. He'll be back eventually uh, early on in the season. So we yeah. can look forward to that. But for now mm-hmm. he's he's focused on uh, focused on the family. Focused on family. So excited <laughs> for them. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I'm really excited to dive into what we did yesterday, but Mm -hmm. first, we have news. So, our first item of business is Beep Boop. Beep Boop. Larry, Mm -hmm. how do you feel about Beep Boop? I don't like it. You don't like it? I'm going to be honest, I don't like it. So, (sighs) I know that's a hot take. That is a very hot take. You know what I do like, though, Larry? Hmm. Iron Menace. Iron Menace, okay. Iron Menace. Now you're talking. I love Iron Menace. Um, families are going to love Iron Menace because they revealed the height requirement for it last week, and it's only four feet. Not bad. That's like really like crazy for a B and M in a dive. Like I feel like that's unheard of. Is it? I. You know what? I. I'll be honest with you. I don't know what the height requirements are for Val Raven or. I'm going to look it up real quick. Val Raven. Because they have those vest restraints. Yeah. So you'd think that it wouldn't yeah, be that Yeah, Val 52. Wow. Okay. So that is a dub for families. and Absolutely. Super exciting. Um, Wednesday, after this episode comes out, before this episode, I keep, when I was doing the notes for today, I wrote after, too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> before this episode comes out, um, I will be at Dorney Park to ride Iron Menace, so mm-hmm. you guys should, like, be following our socials to see how that goes. Yeah, where could people follow you specifically? Um, you can find me at Flight of Taylor, all one word, on Instagram and YouTube and Twitter and TikTok. There's going to be a lot of content coming out of this if um, I know myself well enough. Yeah. I'm excited for you. I really hope you have a good time. I'm looking forward to hearing what you think about I'm it all. I'm so excited for this. I'm... One thing, I actually had been thinking about this last night. I saw they've got the ID sign up. Yes, the ID sign. I forgot to put that in the notes. I like it. You do? I, I'm like, I'm on the fence about it. I think it looks a little claymation. I think me. I like it because it's very, it's very much like a photo op sign is what I saw somebody like describe it as earlier. And I was mm-hmm. like, this makes a lot of sense. I like it. Um, but I was hoping for something a little bit more solid. Um, mm-hmm. If I were smart, I would have done this on my computer so I could have screen shared. But um, here is the thing. Very blurry. I like like the like magma like in the yeah. menace. I just, yeah, I just wish it was like more solid. I think that's the only thing that I w- like would have changed. It was something about it, it's not... I went and looked at the logos that they've had this whole time, and it is a lot more similar than what I thought, but I had just a different, a totally different image in my head of what that sign was going to look like. So, uh, But, it's, I mean, it doesn't look bad. No, it doesn't look bad by any means. No. Also, like, just, like, that spot, like, like somebody said, like, photo op, like, getting the train diving down or coming across, mm. and you're standing in front of that, I'm going to have to make sure I get that picture on yeah, do it. Wednesday. Um, yeah, I guess so you're saying that they made it kind of less solid specifically so that you'd be able to see stuff going on in the background of the picture. I think that's kind of part of okay. the goal. I hadn't I thought will... of that. Yeah. I should ask Ryan that when I see him. Yeah, you should. I'm going to remind me to add that to my questions later. we Will do. So, the only other piece of news that I have for us before we dive into our yesterday adventure... Um, is last week Josh and I briefly brought up the Disney ADA thing that's going on. Um, they're changing it to where it's like getting more strict. 
but it's not going the Six Flags route where you have to have a doctor's note. Um, I feel like if they're changing that, that kind of would have made more sense. But it's basically, you're still doing the screening. Um, there's no longer an in-person screening. It has to be over the phone. Not over the okay. phone, but over Zoom. Okay. Um, their wording specifically says for individuals with autism, but then later says also with developmental impairments which would include physical limitations so the wording was kind of weird yeah i I noticed a lot of people were interpreting it as you must have you know must be on the spectrum yeah but i i don't understand that at all because wouldn't you think that people you know if you have like a physical issue right um Um, that that would be a priority as well (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I know that like somebody reached out to Disney and they are like if it does you will still be able to get one if you have physical limitations. Um I think they're just getting more strict about it like if you're in a wheelchair, you're not getting the ADA unless it's for like rides. Cuz a lot of Disney's queues are like wider than your standard queue. Okay. So if it's not an ADA accessible queue, um that's the only time you would get a pass for it. Oh, okay. I, I guess I see what their logic is. Yeah. I don't know. The whole thing's kind of weird. Brought out the a lot of... The logic is that uh, they want money. The logic is they want money. <laughs> they want people to buy lightning lanes. Yeah. Um, um, they, I, I don't want to be... I, I mean, I could be wrong, but I honestly do not believe their figure that they, that they gave I don't, out. I don't know where people were getting that number. To be Apparently, honest. it was like a Disney Parks executive or something said that it huh. was sixty percent. Sixty percent of Lightning Lanes were ADA, and I just think that they're lying. I just don't it's, believe that. It's, it just I sounds mean, like something to justify a change. I mean, Disney's a massive park. Like, right. people come from all over, especially to go to Disney World. Of course, there's going to be a lot of disabled people at a park where thousands of people go right every single day like 60 percent of all lightning lines like give me a break i just don't believe it i just yeah this just seems like a lot yeah so i Um, don't know um yeah brought up a lot of weird people too um a lot of saw a lot of like interesting takes about you shouldn't be an influencer if you have a disability you (laughs) can't (laughs) you can't use ada if you're gonna post pictures about yeah. your trip like what that's ridiculous oh, and really I, I think the worst the worst take i saw was that this is these changes are being made to improve the guest experience and that there are people there that are that are really expecting like genuinely seem to be expecting that this is going to make lightning lane better and i just think that they're going to be disappointed when disney sells just more lightning lanes and it's exactly the same you know and you know they're going to raise the price because it's disney of course they are. Yeah, it's just yeah. I don't know. I, I, that park just ugh. I don't know. It's weird. Um, I guess the only positive thing I saw come out of this one, I hope that this actually, you know, this new system works. I'm gonna have. I'm not gonna say I'm gonna have faith in it. I'm going to have hope. I'm sure. Um, but the only positive thing I saw that came out of this, which I can't even say is positive because I don't know how you're going to police it. Was that um, if you are found to be faking a disability, you will get a lifetime ban. Okay. Um, I really don't know how you police that besides like... Neither do I. How do you find out? Yeah, especially because you're not asking for doctor's notes like Six Flags does. So they're just going to determine that you're faking. Right. right. They're going to be like, you're not disabled enough. Um, <laughs> I know yeah. people are being like, there's like all these accounts that will coach you on how to get one. Or like get an ada and i feel like people are blowing that out of proportion i'm not gonna be like oh i haven't seen people say how to get one before but it's not like these like disney cheats 101 classes like they like claim it to be okay because i was gonna say maybe that's the reason why they're seeing like so much higher than expected if there's people out there coaching but It's not, I don't think it's really like that. Because I don't know, I feel like it takes balls to be like, I'm going to go pretend like I'm disabled to get a lightning lane. Right. Like, I I don't know. The whole thing is a mess. And I don't want to delve too deep into it. Because I feel like we could have a whole episode on this 
in general, but, um, you know, I always advocate for accessibility on here. So I did want to touch on it at least a little bit. Sure. So, um, happier news, Larry, hold on. I need my, I need my transition noise. Okay. Happy news. What did we do yesterday, Larry? We toured the Camp Snoopy construction site at Kings Island and it was fun. Let's go. There was so much hats. We got to wear hard hats. I didn't get to keep the hard hat. I should have known better. I wanted to keep the hard hat. I was, Larry, my disappointment when I saw Chad holding the bag for everybody to turn it in. Immeasurable. My day is ruined. My day is ruined. I just had an amazing day, but I don't get to keep the hard hat. It would have been cool, but I It would have been amazing. Uh, They probably need those. They probably they might want to have <laughs> other people come out at some point. Sure, for what some reason, you know, <laughs> whatever. I guess I don't need a hard hat that just has a Camp Snoopy sticker on it. But it would have been cool. It would have been cool. I guess I could also just like go buy my own hard hat and slap a Camp Snoopy sticker on it. Yeah, but why would you do that? <laughs> why would I do that? It's why not. A, it's that? not memorable that way. Um. So there. Were, um, for first off, th- we're recording on Monday. Our tour mm-hmm. was on Sunday. Our episode doesn't come out until Thursday. <laughs> um, construction is moving super duper fast over at Kings Island. So as Chad was telling us, things change very frequently. So if anything we say is outdated by Thursday, our apologies. This is just what we were told on Sunday. Sure. And again, things are moving very fast. I imagine so, not too much will change about what we were told. Right. But I you mean, never I know. think like general information will be yeah. the same. But like, if you're like, um, the watchtower was not completed on Sunday and you told us that it was not completed. And then you walk into the park Friday and the watchtower is completed. Oh, yeah. No, I would fault. absolutely <laughs> expect it to not be what we saw uh, yeah, it's not when you go into the, the park. Yeah, that's, a, that's like a whole week of construction. A whole um, week. Yeah. So, um, I don't even know where to start, Larry. Well, I mean, it's it's really moving fast. Um, when you go in there, as of right now, I have no idea what it's going to look like opening day. But as you walk in now, it's it is a little bit hard to visualize what this is going to look like complete because there are still so many things that are in early stages. Right. The um, area just looks so much bigger, even though it's such a small area. It just, mm-hmm. like, opened up so much somehow. Like, I don't know where they pulled the space from. Yeah, right. And the the signs, the I don't know why. I'm obsessed with the signs. The signs I, are I, so cute. They look so good. I like, uh, um, those made an impression on me. The Franklin's Flyer one, like how they're, like, badge-like shaped. Mm-hmm. I yeah. think, I can't wait to see the ID signs for all the other rides in the area once those are ready. Because yeah. Franklin's Flyers were a adorable they were we saw where the construction for the like id sign for the whole area yes as of sunday that was not complete yet no but it was just like footers for it um, looks like it's gonna be a big sign it does <laughs> looks hold on um, i think i can show a picture of that real quick um probably gonna do a lot of on and off screen sharing for our youtube listeners if you're not a YouTube listener and you are an audio listener, head over to YouTube or quad down on Twitter <laughs> and you might see some of this and stuff. And you can see, see the stuff, yeah. And we, we, yeah, we have it on YouTube. Twitter as well. I don't actually yeah. think I posted this one. Um, Hold on. Okay, screen share. I tried to do presentation and that's not what we want. Share. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So like, this looks like it's going to be a pretty massive sign to kind of yeah. split off. Like if you go to the right, it's Rivertown. And if you go to the left, you're in Camp Snoopy. No, no, not Rivertown. The right is Planet Snoopy. Bypass Camp Snoopy. Come to the left, and you're going right into Camp Snoopy. Well, there you go. So, I don't uh, know. Look, I'm excited to see when that's done. The other things we saw, we, we did see um, Pigpen's Mess Hall pretty early uh, on in construction. So, that I think he said it had been under construction for about two weeks wasn't much to see there. It was essentially just frame. Yeah. But you mostly. could get a sense of the size of it. Um, so this is not going to be... We had speculated earlier on this would be kind of an indoor 
like uh, mini fest house. Yeah, that's not the case. This is going to be a counter service, uh, but there will be uh, picnic tables around it. Yeah, which I think that's nice. I don't. That's I'm fine. Not, yeah. 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 I mean, because I think we had thought they were going to. I can't remember what we thought exactly they were going to remove to put. I don't like a even, mess hall. It was mess hall that made us think it was going to be a bigger thing. Yeah. But I guess, I don't know. I never went to camp, so I don't know. Yeah, I mean, yeah mess halls are usually indoor, but like, I don't know. It's pig pen. Eating yeah. outside is messy. So that's still <laughs> a go. mess hall. Um, but I don't know. I'm excited to see a new like kid option in the park. Because like before they had like that snack place that was only mm. sometimes open and it literally I, I had like went there. pretzels. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, they, they talked the about menu. one menu item. There was only one menu item we were uh, told about. I don't know how I feel about that menu item. <laughs> I think it sounds good. It's, so it's it's a hobo pie, which yes. is apparently a deep fried uh, peanut butter and, peanut jelly. Butter and jelly sandwich uh, it's with breaded with corn corn flakes. flakes. Yeah, powdered sugar, strawberry drizzle. I don't I think know. it's gonna be good. I don't know. I think it's going to be good. We'll uh, have to try one. I, I like the creativity with that. Um, I don't know how I feel about it, but it definitely sounds like something like pig pin would whip up in a kitchen. Like, <laughs> sure. I want, I like that food and that food. And like, it feels like a food a kid would make. Like a kid was like, yeah. hey, I want to like um the Charlie Brown Thanksgiving. It reminds me of Charlie Brown Thanksgiving. I mean, do you like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches? I love peanut butter and jelly. I don't like cornflakes. I think that's what's throwing me off a You're little not, bit. They're not going to taste like cornflakes. It's like a common But it's going to be the sensory thread thing. They're going to be fried, though. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to try We'll see. It. We'll, we'll try, try one. See. Um, um, I'm excited yeah, to see what it, it else sounds, we get. Sounds good to me. I, I think if there is not some kind of s'mores item, I'll be sad. that's going to be a missed opportunity. <laughs> I will like for, personally go start making s'mores if there's not yeah. s'mores. I, I'm gonna predict a some kind of s'mores milkshake. I bet you anything there's gonna be a s'mores milkshake. At the very least, a s'mores yeah. milkshake. Um, okay. So yeah, otherwise the only thing we know about pig pins is that there will be a uh it'll be kid friendly meals. So probably mm-hmm. like corn dogs and mac and sure. cheese. Makes perfect sense for where Makes it per- is. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine it was just like some five star Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> um, um good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. Um, another thing, um, Beagle Scout Acre- Acres in general is under construction as well. That's not yet done. Um, it will host captivities at the park. Um, like underneath with the Peanuts gang all going to be under their, like, in their, um, like, camping gear, which is the first time we'll see that in the park, which I think is neat. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's cute. If the, the way that they do it at, I know, like, at Knott's Berry Farm, yeah, those characters are cute. And if they do the same thing at KI, I, I wish I had asked Chad about this, um, then the employees will also be, the people in Camp Snoopy will be dressed up. I would in be, like little camping uniforms, like Boy Scout kind of thing. That would be so cute. That's what they do at Knots. So I, I would assume, I would hope. I I'm would hope that they're doing it here too. I I could see it. I feel like that. I would actually be kind of. Yeah, I think they'll do that. Like, yeah. why have the peanuts dressed up? Um, um, and then that place. What's it called again? I keep forgetting. Beagle Scout Acres. Beagle Scout Acres. Um, unfortunately, I like took a picture of Pigpen's mess hall, but not like the entire area. Pigpen's is right in front of Beagle Scout, like mm. kind of like cat cockeyed. Um, and then just so that for those of the uh, uh, for those of you that aren't familiar, so that Beagle Scout Acres, that's essentially that's the place where they had the petting zoo. Yes, that's previously. where the and it was like a peanut show place before mm-hmm. too. Yeah. Um. So you're still getting to meet and greet characters there. Um, but it'll be like a like a playground with like shade and stuff, so families mm-hmm. can like cool off and let like little ones run off their energy. So I think I think right. it'll be nice. I like from what we saw, like the trees hanging down from it. It looks like it's, it's going to be really yeah. cute when it's done. Absolutely. And then those um, captivities; those were described to us as like emphasizing. Like, like go ahead. No, go ahead. You go first. 
I was just going to say, like, emphasizing a certain, like, trait or, you know, like a positive trait, like courage. Yeah. Um, They were also kind of described as, like, being similar to, like, a merit badge type. Yeah, I think we've seen this at, like, knots before, sort of. Like, I remember um, a couple months ago when they were getting rid of one of their coasters, they were giving out, like, huff and puff badges for riding the coaster before it was gone. (laughs) So I wonder if they'll do, like, little pins and stuff to give families... At least every once in a while. Or, like, at least ones you could go pick up in the gift shop or something if you wanted to buy them. So that would be cute. But, yeah, they're, like Larry said, they're to encourage, like, courage and, like, positive reinforcement for kids to interact with the Peanuts gang. So I think that's cool. Yeah, Um, absolutely. Uh, Yeah, and then just the other thing about this place being shaded and just a place for families to kind of take a break. uh, I was the other thing mentioned heavy on the shade like people are always Mm -hmm. asking for more shade so i'm like happy they didn't just tear down the overhang and be like no everybody go Uh, play on hot metal objects (laughs) that area is already exposed enough as it is Um, yeah i don't know how important this is to note but we were told it's going to be astroturfed um so not mulch or anything like where your kid's going to come with a scab um also makes it more uh, like wheelchair friendly and accessible. Um, I think it was pretty much astroturfed in the original concept art, I think but it, it was, was nice yeah. to get that like confirmation that it's not just concrete or it will be like turfed. Yes, good stuff. Good stuff. Um. Okay, so we covered the Beagle Scout Acres. Um. So I know a lot of people have been asking about the timeline. For like when this is going to open. Mm-hmm. I don't. They The park is not sure yet. Um, late spring. Late that spring is still the whole. as specific as they could get. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the reason we were given for that. Is just that it's. You know with the weather. That's going to be coming. You know. Anytime some now. Crazy days. Yeah. Lots of rain's going to be coming. You know it's April. Uh, so that. And that can delay. Uh, delay some of the construction. So. Yeah, they were, the other specific they gave us was they know it for a fact it won't be April. So okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. we're like, probably going to be more May. I mean, they didn't say that. I'm speculating. It's going to be more like May because it's late spring. Right. Um, um. And the holdup isn't so Snoopy Soapbox Racers either. Like, obviously, mm-hmm. like we pointed out, like it was a six days to complete six the treat. Six days. Six yeah. days. Uh, but like we saw... Pigpen's mess hall, they've been working on it for two weeks and it's still just a frame. Yeah, um, it takes time. It takes, it takes time. time. They don't want to open this new, like all this new stuff one by one. They want to like really showcase it and open it like when it's ready. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And I, I appreciate that. Like, yeah, I would, I would say by June, I, yeah. I imagine that it'll be, it'll be open. Hopefully. Um, and I'm that's still to... early enough in the season to definitely enjoy it. Right. And, and the whole area is not going to be closed this weekend. Um, the new stuff will be closed, like Snoopy Soapbox Racers, Beagle Scout Acres, Pigpins Mess Hall. But the old stuff, like Linus Launchers, Linus Launchers is ready to go. Linus Launchers mm-hmm. will be open this weekend. Um, yeah, I wonder how they're going to block all that up. Because when we were there, there was no, there wasn't like any fencing or anything no. blocking that off. That's going to be a pain. It's going to be really awkward to block off. I wonder if they've already... I wonder if it'll look a lot different than when we see it. Like, if it's I, got, ba- like, big barriers around it. I think it'll be, like, the adventure port fences, you know? Like, I'm trying to remember they what were, those like, were made out of. They were mesh, but they had, like, um, like a banner over it. But, like, you could, like, look through it, because there was, like, little like slits in it are those like movable like where they just are held down by like big weights or something yeah okay yeah so they probably still have those (laughs) right i know i saw i was looking through my pictures and i saw like some fencing like in the background of one of my pictures and i was like okay so it's it's doable we can fence it off yeah like this will yeah it's 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 coming along but yeah it's still it still has some has a ways to go yet including some concrete work and that can take yeah. a while to cure and all that so i thought it was so funny when chad was like so the easy way to get out and leave <laughs> would be to go this way but there's a big dip and yeah. we look around behind us and it's just like this <laughs> massive 
chunk of concrete just missing. Just rebar. Like, it's, just, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, we're not going to walk over that. No. We're going to go back through the area. Yeah. You know, take a little bit more of a tour. Um, but yeah, it was fun. Very, very cool. Very, and very I'm cool. I'm trying to think of what, what other things did we see that... Oh, I see something on here that I know you're excited about. Um... Okay, what am I excited about? There's so many things to the be excited fun about. Picks. The, the fun picks. The fun I'm... picks. Yeah. Yes. The fun picks. I was so excited. I wasn't expecting this at all. So both coasters in the area, once Snoopy Soapbox Racers are open, will have fun picks on them now. So yeah. um, I can't remember. Do you remember if they said Flying Ace was going to be open with the park? Oh, you know what? I don't know. Where's the exit? Because if it's if the exit is coming off somewhere where they the don't want you to go, then close probably not to the Snoopy Soapbox Racers exit. Huh. So I don't know. I, it may he, not be. I it don't may know. not be. But I also um, feel like they wouldn't have specified that like once Snoopy opens. Um, I don't know. Don't quote me on that. I'm sure somebody else said it somewhere. We'll have um, to look for some clarification on whether or not that ride will be open. Um, yeah. But the the photo booth isn't finished yet. So. Yeah, the photo booth's not finished. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, like, if I was looking at the ride, I could show you exactly where the fun picks is going to be. Because Joel, the head of construction, I think that was his title, um, was like construction actually... Construction maintenance or something? Construction maintenance. Um, pointed out exactly where it's going to be. I think it's, like, not on the first drop, but, like... When you're turning towards the whole area, um, that's where that camera's going to be. And I yeah. didn't catch where it's going to be on Snoopy, did you? No, I didn't. No. Oh. Well, he said it was going to be, like, near the brake run on... Uh, yeah, near the brake run Aerial on... Aerial Chase, which is now... Um, Woodstock's, Woodstock's Air Rail. Air Rail. Air Rail. Yeah. Um, we got some word on the theming on that. I don't know if you heard that. I didn't get that. So it's a it's basically theme too. So it's brown track, green supports. If you haven't seen it, they actually did opposite paint that. What brown track green? Oh yes, yes. Brown Sorry. supports, brown green supports, track. green track. Yes, that's what I meant to say. Because it's supposed to look like a tree, and I guess what's happening is Woodstock is delivering mail to the campers. Yes, I and that's love cute. I love all the storytelling they were putting in, like, yeah. um, like all the billboards around, like in front of Flying Ace, there's a Pigpen's Mess Hall sign. It's not by Pigpen's Mess Hall, but it's like a billboard to be like, yes, go to the Soapbox Derby and then hit up Pigpen's Mess Hall where the napkins are optional. I thought that was such <laughs> like, a funny little <laughs> detail on the optional, sign. That's cute. Um, yeah. So I love all the signage and all the storytelling that they're going to be doing throughout the area, like Woodstock's Air Rail. Um, like they didn't have to do that. They could have just been like, "This is still flying Ace Aerial Chase, or it's, it's Woodstock." Whatever. And I know a lot of people expected, and I know we talked about it on the podcast whether or not they were actually going to paint that because they had just like the paint on Aerial Chase was fresh. Like, yeah, it wasn't even faded yet. Like yeah, it was, it was still within the last bright. two seasons that is when they did it, and so that's kind of going above and beyond. I think to yeah paint it, to I'm, match the area. I remember we didn't think they were going to paint um, because I remember at one point they were like um, not or a lot of the things in the area will be getting a refresh, but not everything. And we were like speculating what wouldn't get one. And I know that was one. But then we kept seeing concept art for it. So we were like, okay, maybe. Because it Um, just looked so good in the concept art that it was like, oh, that'd be a real shame. Yeah. If they didn't do that. And so I'm, I'm really happy that they did, even though that was like a. You could argue to. an unnecessary expense, but yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm happy they did it. It looks Me really, too. really good. Yeah. Um, but you know what we thought they wouldn't paint once we heard that like not everything was getting painted. The log what was flume. It? Oh, the lo- yep. That, and they're that working really on that. Surprised me. It's like <sighs> Me too. bright green now, not bright yeah. green, but like probably the same as the treetops mm-hmm. or the treetop for um air rail. I was like really when we happy saw to see it, that. It was, it was, I don't know how. What would you say? Maybe halfway done. Yeah, maybe I know. A Chad, less. Chad said um, it should be done in the next couple days. Oh, so that's going to be done by the time you see it. Then I guess I, I would. Yeah. I'm going to guess. Mm. Um, could be wrong, but yeah. He also he said, said that, that was the last time we were going to ever see the uh, race, race for, for your, your life, life 
Charlie Brown sign. Oh, that was so cool. That um, was a neat moment because the guy was taking the I'm get the weather covering off of it. Yeah. Like, as we were standing there taking our final photos of this uh of I, this sign. In my vlog, um shameless plug to my vlog um at Flight <laughs> of Taylor on YouTube. Um <laughs> There, I literally have the moment where it, like the it's gone. Like you can see it. Charlie Brown's already not on that sign anymore. It's just like the lettering. Um, yeah. Also, they like they redid the queue. Like the roofing for the queue on that looks nicer now. I didn't notice that, but I be- I definitely believe it. It looks really nice. It was and not one I expected. That one is called. That's another one of these names. Some of these names sound a little long, <laughs> but um, this one is what Charlie Brown's rushing river. Rapids. Log ride. So that all those words plus log ride. So rushing river rapids log ride. Um, Charlie Brown's rushing river log ride. Rushing river log ride. Okay. Yeah. That's not. That's not that. Hard it's to not remember, that bad, but it's still a mouthful for a log yeah. flu. But hey, I mean, if it fits their feet, I mean, I wish they kind of would have kept the race for your life name. I get yeah. changing it to be like, this is a new area. Mm-hmm. Um, but Race for Your Life, Charlie Brown is one of the movies, I think. It's uh, Is it? Yeah, Actually, I Actually, so. that sounds about right. But maybe they didn't want to compete with like the racing, like That's Snoop Fox Racers. I had just thought about that. I'm like, oh, I get it. Maybe it's just because Snoop Fox Racers, Race for Your Life, Charlie Brown. Like, yeah, no, they don't want to we... confuse it. Yeah. That makes sense. Actually, like that just dawned on me as I was saying mm-hmm. it. Like, yeah, I was just thinking about it too, so... So, yeah. Um, I mean, it still, like, fits the camp theme good enough, mm-hmm. so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's cute. Yeah. Everything over there. The colors are just so vibrant. I love it. One thing on the fun picks that we didn't touch on, uh, Elizabeth was very excited about this. That is going to be, no, that is the a family suspended coaster. Become a family suspended. That's what they call that. Yeah. Dude, it was already, like, the first family suspended coaster like that from Vacoma. Yeah. And now so it's going to be the only one with a picture a, the, a photo thing on it that's crazy at least in the united states i can't remember if she said ever but um, uh, I, I thought she had said ever but yeah it might have been in the united states at the very least it was the first one in the united states so i love mm-hmm. like, i love that both coasters in the area are vacomas and then the kids can work their way up to invertigo because invertigo is great and nobody should ever hate on invertigo i just <laughs> uh okay <laughs> But I, I do think it's funny, like, Vacoma, their uh, brand is going through kind of a a resurgence. Like, a, yeah. a few years ago, you would not hear any coaster enthusiasts talking about how they were excited about a Vacoma. No. They were kind of hated on. And now, all of a sudden, it's like, everybody wants Vacomas. Yeah. We're excited for um, Good Gravy. We're excited for Snoopy Soapbox Racers. We're, I'm excited. Happy for Vacoma. Mm-hmm. Yep, it's always good a good redemption arc. Good redemption. Um, what else? What makes sense to go ahead and say now? Oh, did do we know if the space buggies are a part of the area? Because if not everything was going to be painted, I think space buggies are the thing that didn't get painted. But it doesn't really make sense to me to be in the I'm, area. I'm honestly, not sure. I'm gonna see if I can Google this real quick. Camp Snoopy yeah. King. Knott's Berry Farm comes up right under. Gotcha. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to remind myself exactly what that thing was called. I like that in the concept art oh. for um, Beagle Scout Acres, there's like this like mm, like camper RV thing that it looks like people are walking up to. Um, and I think that was the original concept. Like Kings Island has their food trucks. I think that might have been the original concept for Pigpen's Mess Hall, but now it looks like it's like a more like stand in thing. Gotcha. Yeah. I'm trying to think mm-hmm. of other things because there's a lot. There was so much. It was a lot to process. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Larry, you know, this Go is ahead. so random. We made a new friend and that made me so happy. Yes, we did meet. We met a cool guy there at the uh, at the, the tour. The tour. Uh, uh, his uh, let's see, what was his Twitter? Let's I think him. it was all clear and out of here, and he's on um, Instagram and YouTube and Twitter, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. I just wanted to shout him out because he was fun. He was fun to hang out with. Yeah, all clear and out of here. 
on uh, on X or Twitter. X. Uh, and then he's got a link tree on there that'll take so. you to to everything else he does. So yeah, this cool dude, cool dude, very cool. Um. Oh, I guess it's important for us to mention that Snoopy Soapbox Racers will be having a fast lane. Oh, that reminds me of another thing to touch on after this. Anyway, <laughs> there is a fast lane. Um, for one, you're going to enter the queue between Beagle Scout Acres and the ride itself. Mm-hmm. Um, so the left lane or like the left entrance will be fast lane. I feel like that's pretty standard on most of the coasters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty standard. I was trying to like rack my brain through the uh, coasters. I was thinking about it too. Yeah, because like the first one that came to mind was Flight of Fear, and I was like, "But Flight of Fear, you have to go in through the exits, and then there's like stairs off to the side." Flight of Fear has a yeah. weird fast lane. And well, so the, does one, Beast. Yeah, the ones that were built before fast lane existed, they kind of had to fudge like, it. improvise. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yes, there will be a fast lane. I. I was going to ask if it was Fastlane Plus, but King's Island doesn't do Fastlane Plus anymore. Not it's anymore. It's all just Fastlane. Yep. It's uh, all just one one product. I should have asked if it was going to be single-use Fastlane, too. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, you know, mm-hmm. if, if I had to guess, I would probably bet no. I don't think they would anticipate selling a lot of those, but you never Who know. Knows? Yeah, you yeah. never know. But it will have a Fastlane. Um... The ride itself is not testing yet. Um, mm-hmm. When we saw it, it was kind of like stopped right out of the station so we could take photo ops and stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure why. Um, I don't. I'm not sure why the train was on the on the track the way it was. But yeah, we we were able to confirm it had not tested yet. Yeah, I think I think it was solely just so we could have the photo op. To be that honest, dragged it out for photos. You think? Yeah, I think um, like the coma, like Elizabeth was telling us, like. If you watch where the like train reveal video that they posted, like the Vacoma dude was like, "Let me give you a special treat," and like pulled it back a little bit mm-hmm. to like show it. Okay. Uh, so Vacoma, anything that's happening with the trains, right, or the singular train? I keep trying to say multiple trains. That would not be good on a boomerang. Um, he uh, so Vacoma <laughs> is doing all of the testing right now. That's not like actual testing. It's just like making sure the train works. Mm-hmm. Um, they're doing that now, and once they feel like comfortable, then the park gets the reins on it. I guess mm-hmm. something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think he'd also said that like Vacoma would be on site to begin the actual yeah. proper testing, but I don't remember when he said that was going to be. I, I'm I don't think he even said soon. yet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. Just. But yeah, we we didn't really talk about the trains. The trains are adorable. The trains. If you are haven't seen so them. Cute. Yes. They're, um. Let me pull up a picture of them real quick. I don't know if I got, like, a good, like, just picture of all of them. Okay, this is, like, a decent picture to show off the trains. They're all themed to a peanut. I have. Oh, hold on. I gotta, like, not dox myself real quick. I thought it was funny that I was asking. I was like, which which car is it that has the, like, ADA? And they were like, it's the Charlie Brown one. And I'm like, yeah, which which one? They're like, the Charlie Brown one. And I had to, re- like, think, who, which one is... <laughs> Who's Charlie what does Charlie Brown? Brown look like? Because it's been so long since I've actually watched any Peanuts. That's funny. I'm I'm happy <laughs> that um, you pointed it out to me. I was like, I don't even remember what I was doing, but I heard you go, Taylor, they're talking about accessibility. And I went, <laughs> I like accessibility. Like that's You're, you're just... our accessibility <laughs> advocate for the what? podcast. Oh, you can see where the Fun Picks booth is behind this picture. Mm-hmm. So that was going to be the Fun Picks booth for both rides. That was pretty far along. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah. I think both rides exit onto that path in between. Because um, the exit platform, we um, went up to see into the station. Um, and we had to go through here. And you get a really good view of Flying Ace Aerial Chase from there. That's not that name anymore. I said that with my full chest, too. And you're going to. You're going to keep doing it, I promise. I'm going to. Sometimes I call it Even Runaway Chad Reptar. Even Chad was doing that. He would have to stop himself and be like, Woodstock's Air Rail. Woodstock's um, Air Rail. I'm just going to sit Air in Rail. the corner and stare at it for a while, opening day, and repeat it over and over again until I stop <laughs> saying the wrong one. There's that tower up in the upper uh, Yeah. So, left. You can see that tower there. Here's the watchtower. That's not done yet. Um, still, we got to put Franklin in there. We got to put the uh, Woodstock in there. 
I'm so happy that, like, what's, Franklin's not just making his first, like, appearance getting a ride. Like, because he got Woodstock Gliders, it's now Franklin's Flyers. Mm-hmm. But, like, he's getting, like, to be, like, a whole statue on a ride mm-hmm. to be up in this tower. So I, I just think that's really nice. Yes. Yes. Um, but, yeah, you can see here how, like, each of these trains are themed. Like, I think this one's probably Woodstock. Um, it's been so long. I don't know who any of these are anymore. I know right here where the picture, like the train kind of gets cut off is Pigpen. Okay. I want to keep, I want to say this is Lucy, but that's not right. Lucy's like blue, right? Lucy's blue. Blue. There's is a pink one. Sally? Sally. Sally's pink. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay um I, it's been a long time so i'm assuming the okay the blue and red that's got to be linus right i think that's linus i think i gotta study on my peanuts i don't know who these front two are i don't know who the front front car is like my thought is the red baron okay why isn't charlie brown in the front because um he's charlie brown but he's charlie brown but he's in the back he's on, in the back yeah he's in the back um but yeah, I'm gonna have to study because I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah. Um, but it it was it was looking good. A lot of progress. We got to go into the and you could check out. We'll both have videos on this. We got to go in to the like electrical yes. room for this, which even for a coaster of that size is oh, there's a was, lot in there. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot deeper. I thought I was gonna like yeah. walk in, it'd be a storage closet, and walk right out, but it just yeah. like, kept going. And even that building was themed to a log like a log cabin type thing yeah and i just i love the attention to detail there and it was air conditioned it felt so nice in there it wasn't like hot yesterday but it was like warm enough that i was like oh can i stand in here for a minute um i also loved the big ass fans in the station well when everybody started laughing i thought we were just like oh somebody had a snack there because there was a jar of like some kind of nuts on top of those. Yeah. And then I saw your tweet later <laughs> and I was like, oh. <laughs> I just love that there's a brand of fans called Big Ass Fans. Oh, gosh. And that's what they have in there. So if you go in, if you're waiting in line for Snoopy Soapbox Racers and you think, man, those fans are good, I'd, I'd like to have one at home. It's Big Ass Fans. It's fans. They're... <laughs> I was happy when I saw that there were fans in the station. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah. oh, yay, air, airflow, yay. I thought that was neat. Okay, so I guess they said the way the train comes into the station, yes. it's going to be a, such a speed, I guess, that enough of a, enough speed that they're going to need to have that platform kind of lower a little bit. Yes. So, like, okay, so when I first saw a picture of the station and I was like, why are the gates so tall? Like, I thought it was, like, goofy that they were so tall for a kid's coaster. Like, on in Vertigo, it makes sense. One, it's, like, suspended. Or sure. not suspended, but it's under the track. Um, but then once I heard, like, oh, it's going fast enough that the floor has to drop. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, I guess we don't want our kids to be, like, up on the gate, like, that close to the train. But, man, how fast does this ride go? I wonder if I could Google that yeah. real quick. I mean, I'm sure it's not, like, that fast, but... It's. I do wonder. My big question is, what's going to end up being a better ride, this or Good Gravy? This one goes thirty six miles an hour. Okay, that's but actually like, going to feel kind of fast. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm looking up Good Gravy right now to see how fast it goes because it looked slow in that video they released really the other slow. day. But maybe yeah. it was just because there's the wines turkeys. more too. Yeah. Yeah, it's just that ride. I was, I found myself just a little underwhelmed by that POV. That In that fairness, ride's solely yeah. like sold by the theming to me. Uh, yeah, but I mean, in fairness to the park and the, and that POV, there was it was the trains were loaded with plushies. Yeah, so Ooh. it's probably gonna be a little different with people on it. Um, yeah, theirs is thirty seven <laughs> miles an hour, but theirs okay. is a foot shorter. Ha. It's 72 feet, ours is 73 feet, and Flight of Fear is wait, 74 wait. feet. it's one mile an hour faster. One mile an hour That's faster. That's it. I'm getting one of those, I'm gonna get one of those, like, speeding guns the cops have. We're gonna measure this. 
yeah, I feel like they just I feel like they just looked at Kings Island 36 miles an hour. Well, guess what? Ours goes 37. <laughs> yeah, you guys might have a foot on us, but we have one mile an hour faster. Yeah. Um, um the yeah. theming is fantastic. The theming is fantastic. I think it's gonna win in the theming department for sure, even though this one is also well This one got a whole area themed though. So well, like, that's well if you yeah, if you put it that way. I don't know. Both are really, yeah. really cute. I don't feel like it has yeah. to be like a huge competition, but like No, one must be destroyed. One gets to go over the station and you there could can like only be one. <laughs> only can be one dude the way that the track came over the station like over the exit platform i was not expecting yes like yeah i was not paying attention and then i heard chad say that so i pan over and i'm like oh that's not that far above your head no um it goes it goes like almost right over the um the okay the back spike Wait a minute. Is it the spike or is it the like lift that pulls you back that takes you pretty much right over the uh, log flume? I think it's the back like lift. The hill. lift. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, yeah, almost over the li- the log flume. That's crazy. Yeah. Um. That log flume is a good ride, by the way. It is a really one of the fun better rides flume. in that area. Yeah. The whole area just is like so like it's not over over like intertwined but it's like oh intertwined enough that i'm like oh Mm -hmm. yeah um man oh i guess ride height minimum they think is 38 inches um they did say to fact check them on that but that information is not like publicly available yet um but as far as we know right now it's 38 inches what is uh what is does holiday world have theirs oh Good point. Uh, good gravy. You can Google that. Uh, while Larry's Googling that, the max height for this is 80 inches, which I think is six foot six. Which makes sense okay. because of how close you are to uh, under Sorry, the Sorry, LeBron James. <laughs> Sorry, LeBron James. Uh, this one. Okay, yeah. So good gravy's 38. So I imagine that Chad was probably right about yeah, that. Yeah, probably 38. Yeah. Um. Yeah. This was like, I don't know, Larry. Was there anything? Oh, um, the Camp Snoopy merch line. It is coming. They were not at liberty to tell us what is coming. No, yeah, um, they wouldn't tell us. Wouldn't tell us, but they did tell us new Squishmallows were coming. Yes, didn't tell they, us. W- they wouldn't tell us if it was specifically Camp Snoopy no. Squish- Squishmallows. Uh, but, but we are getting more new ones. We are. Getting new ones. Yes, I'm so sad they stopped selling the Beast and Diamondback ones. Like those ones were so cute. Are you serious? Why would they do that? No, like they still sell um like the blue ice cream and Orion and um they have one for Mystic Timbers. It's like a chipmunk or a groundhog or something. No, it's a beaver. Um but like look at look at Jeff. No, that's Jeff not is so are cute. they just doing that to make you feel bad for not buying them earlier? Because like you'd think they would be that's adorable. It's so cute. Yeah. Hands. I probably need to pick up a couple of Kings Island Squishmallows. Oh, here are the other ones they have, minus um, Diamondback, because they don't have the Diamondback one anymore. So we have Orion, we have Beast, we have Blue Ice Cream, Diamondback, and the Flying Pigs, because Cincinnati. I feel like I need, I definitely feel like I need the, uh, uh, the Blue Ice Cream one. The Blue Ice Cream one's really cute. But yeah, I mean, if that was, I don't know if you had other things you wanted to say about the uh, the uh the tour or what we saw but i know i like i just want to say that was an extremely uh special treat to be able to do that and yeah. uh, i know both of us are really really appreciative yeah uh, for I, that for that tour i like i just couldn't i like kept texting everybody i knew i was like i'm so excited uh, yeah. i literally like, sent a couple of my friends like pictures of me like under the spike while i was there because i was like i just can't like keep this like it was it was safe. really neat. I mean, the was park cool. was bustling with activity. There were employees all over the place coming in because they're getting gearing up for the season. All the rides were testing. It was yes. It was a good day. It was felt good. It felt good to be there on a warm day. Yeah, uh, I could not have asked for better weather. Yeah, I literally like when I was driving up the freeway. I saw the t- I was on the phone with my friend Alex, um, and I saw the tower for one, and I went. I like screeched. I was like, "Oh my god, it's the tower!" I got so excited, <laughs> and then like as I like get closer to the park, I saw Delirium testing, and I was like, "Instantly!" I got so excited. I was just yeah, like, I, everything. 
<laughs> hit my microphone stand. I texted you like, I see Orion. You, yeah, she texted me about Orion. <laughs> I was just like, they were training <laughs> ride ops and stuff and like other parts of Camp Snoopy. Yeah. It was really cool to just see the park kind of like coming before alive. Before it oh, opens. Yeah. yeah. That too, yeah. And like literally there's a part in my vlog, I don't know, you might have caught the moment too, where Chad's talking to us and they just start hammering on a sign behind him. Because they're like, <laughs> yeah. we gotta get we gotta get this done. We gotta we gotta get moving. Yeah. And he <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I asked them to wait, but the work but stops get for done. no one. Yeah. Work stops for no one. But it was really cool. So it was cool. a great time. Yeah. I feel like we could sit here for like three hours and talk about it and still just not cover. <laughs> like, it was such a good experience. It was. It's just like such a, like, so therapeutic, you know, winter sucks. And then yeah. you you go and you're like, wow, they're almost ready. It's nice out. It's almost time. It's t almost time for the theme park season to start almost again. That's a time. great feeling. When this Great episode feeling. comes out, the next day is pass mm -hmm. order preview, and then it's opening day, and like yeah. they we're full, we're full swing into the season. Then full speed ahead. Full speed ahead. But Larry, do you have any closing thoughts about what we saw on our tour? No, I think that's I think that pretty much covers it. I'm sure I'll think of something as soon as we're done recording. Probably, uh, but I think I think we've got it. But you still have a vlog to put out, so you might cover exactly. that in your vlog. Yeah, so both of us are doing videos. Yes. Um, I, mine should be out by the time that this comes out. So I'm going to hold yours, you to though? that. Yeah. I'm going to hold you well, to thank that. Thank you. Please do. So, Larry, where can they find you? So, you can find me um, on YouTube, KI Coaster Guy. Um, you can also find me on X at KI Coaster Guy. I finally fixed it. You finally <laughs> fixed it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I, I TikTok as well. TikTok uh, as well. KI Coaster Guy. Wow. I'm so excited to see your video, Larry. Uh, yeah, when's yours coming out? Mine already came out. Mine came out at noon today. Oh, I didn't even know it was out already. Um, My gosh, Taylor, you went. Dude, I, I literally came home. I got home at like 4.45. I didn't stop editing like pictures and videos and everything until 11.30 last night. So I wanted <laughs> okay. everything ready to go. Well, like, so available now, and I'll watch that after the after we finish recording. Well, thank you. Um. So we're already at like 52 minutes in our episode and I still have other things I want to talk about kind sure, of yeah, related. Sure. So this is going to be a little bit long. Um, so I think one of my biggest takeaways, and I've kind of noticed this earlier in the seat or like in the off season too, is like, I feel like there's been such a, like, not a hatred for family attractions, but like not a love. And I understand, <laughs> um, in part where people are coming from, like I want the I want the vortex plot filled as much as anybody else. And I want a really right. good coaster in that plot. Um, but like actually seeing the area and like seeing how it's coming together has me so excited for kids and families and for myself, because I love like Franklin's flyers. Like I love that I love flying scooters. Um, and I just love all the colors and stuff. And one of the things I was thinking about when I was talking to somebody the other day was just like we talk about how we want a renaissance of the coaster wars again um but like everybody that experienced the coaster wars has kids and those kids mm -hmm. need somewhere to start and i feel like yeah. Snoop the snoopy soapbox racers is such a good like middle ground starting place like you have great pumpkin and then like you don't just jump from great pumpkin to be or to orion no <laughs> like, no doesn't work like that doesn't work like that um yeah i mean i think it's good it's really good to have something there's as a parent myself you know um uh, I, I mean my kids are getting to the point where we're able to start moving you know more throughout the park but they're still they're still pretty young and so it, it is good to have something over there where it's like okay i i want to ride that right because <laughs> like the only thing the most exciting thing for me in that area was um woodstock air rail and it's not my favorite <laughs> i ride it like once or twice a season yeah um, um so it's it's nice to have that and of course you do need things to like move kids up to right i see for a, sure a lot of enthusiasts that are like <laughs> ow ow um the take was gonna be too hot had to stop <laughs> <laughs> too spicy too spicy um a lot of enthusiasts that are like well my parents said you ride orion 
or you're like done and we're never coming back. And I'm like, I just feel like that's not a good way to go about it. Like, sure, that might have no. worked for you, but that's a good no. way to turn people <laughs> off from coasters forever. But, but I will tell you that now that brings up an inter- interesting point because I think a lot of coaster enthusiasts clearly don't have kids because they think <laughs> that parents want to go around doing parades and restaurants and uh ki- kitty rides all day that's actually not the case no and i remember when i was a kid dads were like the hardest on you like they didn't want to they didn't want to be in camp snoopy they were dra- trying to drag you to, like be a man <laughs> like, yeah and no that's not a great way to do it because it actually you know when i was a kid i was afraid of coasters so same uh getting you know it, it took you know it, i was a teenager by the time i actually thought they were actually fun yeah so you know how many adults I see that are scared of coasters still? Like, yeah. I feel like Snoopy Soapbox Racers is going to be a really good step for those kids, those people, too. Yeah. Because, like, the only other, like, middle ground coasters we have are kind of old. Like, Adventure Express, as much as I love it, can be rough if you don't know how to ride it the right way. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it pushes, I mean, Adventure Express is, Adventure Express was, like, the transition coaster yeah when i was a kid i think it still is a good transition coaster but this one i think kind of pushes kids boundaries just a little bit more because it's you're going to go backwards like it's it's not going to be like a super intense ride but it's going to do things that to a kid might be like in their mind kind of scary um and so i think it like kind of pushes their boundaries a little bit like gets them to do something a little bit more like i don't know brave on a on a ride I'm just thinking of something, and it may be, like, totally, like, like batshit crazy, mm-hmm. um, but, like, follow me here. Planet Snoopy, like, real little kid area, minus Woodstock Express, because that opened with the park. Um, real little kid rides. Then you move a step, and you're in Camp Snoopy. A little mm-hmm. bit before you're actually in those mid-transition rides. You move to Coney Mall. Those are a lot of, like, really, like, hardcore middle ground rides. Mm. And then you move out into, like, Action Zone and Area 72, where it's it's Action Zone. It's really big, intense rides, minus right. the bat. Um, I feel like if you just work around the park like that as a brand new person, like, brand new to roller coasters, it's, mm. like, such a good loop to, like, get yourself, like, introduced to everything. Yeah. And I don't I think, think that's intentional. Speaking of which... I think the bat is a very good transition coaster. It too. Is. That was one of the first like bigger coasters that, that we took our kids on because uh, it's just, it doesn't go upside down. Like that's, that's like the major, I think consideration for a little kid is whether it goes upside down or not. I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, although I would say that like Orion, I still think if you were, if I was a kid, I'd be terrible. that's the ride that I would look at and be like, that's the scariest ride. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you have, like, okay, if I'm looking at something that's, like, 150 feet, mm. and one goes upside down and one doesn't, the one that doesn't go upside down is less scary. Yeah. But, like, when you're, like, okay, Banshee versus Orion, I'm probably saying that Banshee's less scary. It's just, I, yeah, I'm just trying to put myself back in, in those shoes of that kid that I was. The way that that drop looks, it's just, would be it's, have been so menacing to me. I would have been, like, there's no way I'm ever riding that. Yeah, no, as a kid, the, yeah scary mm-hmm. I'd be like well, they they it was already bad enough when they had the other one and yeah. <clears throat> but yeah oh, goodness yeah but yeah no i agree with you that family coasters are really important and I, I think um it's just one of those things where right now i feel like we're getting a, a lot disproportionate amount <laughs> yeah at parks in the u.s no i'm hoping um i do hope that we get some like good like big rides soon mm-hmm. but i understand like Okay, we got to bring the families back. We got to, mm-hmm. like, in this even case, it out. Yeah. In this case, at Kings Island, I was 100%. I mean, never bothered me. They were doing this 100% supportive because that area felt like it needed uh, work a while ago. And yeah. I-, I wasn't expecting anything at all. Um, I was actually really surprised Yeah, when we ended up with uh, with this. So I was... Not surprised that we got Camp Snoopy. Like, obviously, I didn't know it was coming. But, like, mm-hmm. when I heard Camp Snoopy, I was like, okay, that makes sense. Like, that was oh, yeah. done. But the coaster, mm-hmm. the fact yes. that we got a coaster with it, I was like, where did this come from? Like, this is oh, insane. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. To be clear, like, I'd been 
thinking we would end up with a Camp Snoopy at some right. point. Well, especially because um, we got Adventure Port last year. I was mm-hmm. like, okay, if we don't get something I, I, yeah. big, Camp Snoopy's the next logical. If you would have asked me last year before the announcement, way before the announcement, it's like, what do you think Kings Island is going to get? I, I would have been like, I don't know, maybe like a small restaurant. Like, I wouldn't have thought anything yeah big after the you know after adventure port so speaking of adventure port i love that area i was um talking to a friend a couple weeks ago she's never been to king's island so i was like kind of explaining everything to her Mm -hmm. and i was like looking for pictures and i was like that area used to be so dead and now like just seeing all the love and life in it i just i really love that like the revamping that King's Island's been doing. And yeah, and they've been at it for years now. Um, yeah. They've really gone through, like, I would say that's, like, I would consider that the signature thing of Mike Koontz's, uh time there, is that he's just gone around, like, he fixed the glockenspiel, they redid International Street, they built a Giga, they brought like, back the, antique the only areas. Yeah, the only areas that are untouched, if I'm not mistaken now, are Action Zone and the Water Park? Am I yeah. missing anything? I yeah, think that's like, it. Yeah. So and it's like they've gone through the whole park pretty I much. I love seeing the revitalization of everything. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, really nice to see. It's a much prettier park than it used to be. Not that it was not that it was bad looking before, but they've just gone through and just really I mean, all those pavers on International Street, that wasn't like that. That was asphalt before. Yeah. Like, it's, it's just they've done a lot of work. I think one thing that really stood out to me last year with Adventure Port was, like, they could have just left it, like, plain concrete, like, the rest of Coney Mall and stuff. But mm-hmm. the fact they took the time to make it a stained concrete to, like, like this is an area. This is its mm-hmm. own spot. Yeah. I just think it's, like, those little details that they've been doing. There's this part of me with Adventure Port, and I haven't spent enough time there. There is a part of me that feels, like, a little bit sad about it, but it's just be- it's only because that area always looked a certain way. <laughs> yeah. So it was like nostalgic for me to walk through it and be like, wow, this looks exactly like I remember it. And now it's, it's doesn't, but of course that's just, you know, time marches on. Right. I saw somebody um, argue with me that like, Oh, Oktoberfest used to be like eight rides. And I was like, I don't think it was ever eight rides all at once. And yeah. like, it where action zone is used to just be the end. Like that didn't used to be yeah. there. And he just, I was like, okay, I'm just not going to argue with this person anymore. Mad. He was upset about it. And I, I understand his point of view. Like, I think that um, making Adventure Report, instead of doing Adventure Report, you could have made that Oktoberfest. I think a lot of people were expecting that they were eventually going to revitalize Oktoberfest. But yeah. I think Adventure Report makes more sense. <laughs> I mean, they both would have been fine choices. I think that building an area, to me, it seems like they built an area that where they were sort of re-theming Adventure Express and pretty much building an area around it, kind of, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, it was more, like, just revitalizing the theming that Adventure Express yeah. has lost over the years. and Right. And then, yeah, and then so it's it like, up. it makes sense. It The choice makes sense, because there's a ride called Adventure Express there that's all Indiana Jonesy. So why uh, would you make it a German area? Yeah, right. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. I'm happy. Yeah, I like it, too. I think they're doing a good job. Very happy. Larry, do you have any other thoughts you'd like to talk about today? I think I think that just about covers it. Okay. I just I want to leave you space if you have anything else you would like to say. Well, I appreciate it. All right. But we've got, let's see. Oh, we've got some questions, don't we? We've got some questions. Um, first, I want to give a shout out before we get into questions. Um I'm gonna go with Mado. It might be Mado. Um I had retweeted, like, send us your questions. Mm-hmm. And this person was like, hey, just asking like basic questions about Camp Snoopy that I'm like, if you look, you can just find these. Um, That sounds rude. I don't mean it to be rude. I'm just like, these aren't like delve into things, like as things we were going to cover anyway. So I was already answering this person and I was like, listen to our episode on Thursday. So if you listen to our episode, hey, hey that hey. sounded way... <laughs> <laughs> you're okay i think they understand that it was a, a you know what you meant yeah it was just um, like a friendly like hey thanks for listening um i just wanted to uh, like give that shout because it's like yeah. fun and i yeah, asked absolutely. you to come listen so i'm happy uh, if you did before we get into the ones that you already have because this was a new one and i just wanted to Is cover because the... we go ahead no just go ahead 
uh, McLovin oh. had asked, why was the train suspended like that? Did it value? We kind of covered that earlier, but I still wanted to um, to get to it. Yeah, uh, they weren't testing it, so I don't think it valid with, as far as I know, they just pulled it out that way. But yeah. they might have been, uh, like Taylor had suggested, maybe they did that so we could get pictures of it because there was the tour going through. Maybe it had something to do with the uh, testing or I have no idea. Yeah, they, hadn't think- run, they haven't run it yet, so it couldn't have valid. Oh, you should have asked more about that. Like, why? But no, it why wasn't, like, was valid. That? It was, like, purposefully like that. Yeah. Um. Boop, boop. Thank you, McLovin. Beep, boop. Beep, boop. I like beep, boop, Larry, and I'm very offended. I'm sorry. Um, okay. So, to get into the questions that we already have, um, Eric asks, okay, it's kind of two questions in one. If you had to ask one coaster at Cedar Point to replace it with a wood coaster, what would it be? And from what company would you want to build it? Hmm. Do you have an answer on that? Um, I gave him guesses when he asked. I like was like, okay, these are what I'm going to guess you guys are going to say. So I'm going to give those answers. I thought that you and I would say GCI. Mm -hmm. I, and then I said... Or you would say Gravity Group, and then Josh would say GCI, and then, like, be like, because Predator at Darien Lake has Titan Track, and I really <laughs> like the Titan Track. Mm. Um, so, Josh, you should, like, tweet about this when you hear our episode, and be like, yes, it was, I was gonna say GCI. Um, I'm gonna still say with GCI, I just don't know what I would ask. I well, guess... Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I feel like we've kind of talked about this before. I feel like we'd all get rid of Mine sort of. Ride. Were you going to say something else? That would be a good one. Well, only because now what I'm thinking is, what view do I want to have from a wooden coaster? Well, the, and but but that's a good answer though. I feel that's bad. Not a great ride. Rip. Sorry, Laurel. Um, I love me a good arrow, but like. Oh my god. Laurel's gonna like crucify me now. Oh my god! Here it comes. Oh. <laughs> Um, but the only other rides I would ask are like Rougarou or Corkscrew, where you can't fit a wooden coaster. <laughs> yeah. So you're going, oh, no, wait. So you're not going what I thought you were going to do. Okay. <laughs> what did you think I was going to do? I thought you were about to say, because you said, sorry, Laurel. So I'm like, oh my God, she's about no, to ax Magnum. No, no, no. I love Magnum. <laughs> For some reason, people think I'm a Magnum hater and Magnum's like my number zero at Cedar Point. <laughs> It's got to be Millennium Force for me. I am. Magnum is growing on me. But I think that your answer is the best one is probably would be Mine Ride. Yeah. But I was thinking in my head of like, ooh, what would be a nice place for a wooden coaster? Because I want to see the, I want to see the lake. Yeah. Well, so it. part of my thought with Mine Ride was it's on that nice like lagoon mm-hmm. with the like lily pads and stuff. And it's like, oh, that's really cute. But now that I'm mm-hmm. thinking about it, Beast used to have a pond. <laughs> And they had to drain the pond because it was, like, I think because it was ruining Beast. I could be wrong. Um, I have no idea why they did it. <laughs> and also the mosquitoes were terrible. But, like, mosquitoes are going to be terrible anyway. I wish on they would ride. bring that back because it looks so, so cool with, like, the water coming out of that. But yeah. anyway. I like the abandoned mine feel on um, Beast now, though. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I think mine ride's, like, the, like, best answer for this. Yeah, I agree. And GCI is... The way I would go to, I think Gravity Group would be, if they build a Gravity Group at Cedar Point, I'd be ecstatic. But I, I, if I had the choice, I mean, most of my favorite wooden coasters are GCIs. Excuse me. Yeah. I, yeah, mm-hmm. I think GCI is the way to go. Mm-hmm. Um, I was just like, I feel like Larry is the one that would throw a like curveball to say Gravity Group. If one of us <laughs> there, were. I, I haven't been on as many Gravity Groups either, to be fair. So. That's fair. Yeah. Oh, Eric, there's your answer. Um, Execution Man. What should I do if I happen to acquire an entire uniform for a defunct theme park? Alex, I wonder what defunct theme park this is. Is it going to be Geauga Lake? It's Six Flags Ohio, which is Geauga Lake. Oh, right. But he has a Six Flags Ohio vest. You have okay, so you're actually are you so he's actually trying to put together that's cool. Yeah. That's like a really so cool. cool thing to do. I've never even thought about trying to do something like that. Like 
and, and it's defunct, so nobody can get mad at you because the park what, what doesn't neat, exist anymore. Yeah, what like a neat thing to have in your coaster collection. I don't know. You should keep it. Yeah, and display it. And like Six Flags Ohio, like only existed for a year, like yeah. as that name. So like that's like extra exclusive. I don't I like know what it. Other pieces you need for this uniform, but like Alex, go like take your college graduation pictures in this or something. Yeah. Yes. Like frame yeah. frame it. Wear it to Cedar Point opening day. <laughs> um, he wore it to the eclipse event. So Oh he did. Oh my gosh. So are there pictures of this? Because I want to see it. Don't know. Alex send Alex, Larry tweet a picture. picture of it. Yeah. Yes. Um, that's cool. You should keep it. That's my answer. Yeah, keep it. Never get rid of it. Keep it forever. Yes. Um Alex I almost read Alex's question again. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> oh, Elizabeth asks, what surprised Taylor and Larry on the tour the most about Camp Snoopy? Hands, roller coaster. <laughs> Thank you for reading this out. Uh, what surprised you the most? Um, I think overall, ooh, detail I forgot to mention about the derby car, like the train. Um, the wheels. I didn't expect the wheels to be themed to a derby car. Like, that was just such a random touch they added that I was like, oh, that's really cute. I'm not even sure. I, I'll i be honest with you. I'm not sure that I noticed that. Chad pointed oh, it oh. out. That was the only reason I noticed. <laughs> a lot of things just sometimes. Um, there was so cool. much going on. Cool. Yeah. Um, But I think overall, the thing that surprised me the most was, like, how open the area felt now. Mm. Um, I'm trying to think of what surprised me the most. Really, um... I guess just the amount of the amount of stuff that was already there theming wise, like yeah. the, the signs and, and things like that. Um, and I guess my nerdiest answer would be, I was surprised how big the um, electrical room was for that little coaster. Yeah. Like how many, like <laughs> how many pieces there were in there? <laughs> there was so much in there. Yeah. I saw like one dude, he was like, nobody else is going to care about this, but me. And I was like, homie, you're in a, there's so many of us enthusiasts here right now. Of course, yeah. we all care about it. We all got really excited about going to a park that's not open. Yeah. <laughs> to look, to there look was at like the 30 of stuff. us at a park yeah. five days before we can actually be at the park. <laughs> right. It yeah, was no, cool. buddy, we are all nerds. We're it's all okay. nerds. We all care. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah, that was such a cool event. Shout out Chad and Elizabeth. Absolutely, yeah. Thank you so much. That was a great experience. Fantastic experience. Um, Dan Glauser. I hope I said that right. It's Glauser, right? I think so. I think so. Dan, I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Um, what's your favorite car on Kings Island PR Snoopy Soapbox Racers? And are you going to be trying the you know what dessert at the mess hall when it opens? <laughs> Um, I think we need to. We I think to. we need to get one. I think we need to do like a quad down pod, like TikTok. Yes, where we try that. We'll have to play in a day. We need to do like yeah. a meetup at the park one day. Like mm -hmm. let everybody I know, agree. like we will be here, and we can but all. Yeah, we're go gonna try. be trying that. Yeah, we'll be trying that. Um, as for my favorite car, um, I think Pigpen. Pigpen is my favorite okay. right now. It's really cute. I like the um I like the front one because I just like that the way that it's angled. Yeah. Like the front of it is angled and the, it like, just looks cool. I like the pipes on the side of it. Mm. -hmm. All of yeah. them are really cute. I don't feel like you can have a wrong favorite car on that ride. Mm. Yeah, they're yeah, they're all they're all adorable. All adorable. Um Cedar Kev asks, do you prefer the Camp Snoopy theme or the Planet Snoopy theme? Camp Snoopy, no question. Yeah. Like, I've been wanting that for a long time for them to do that. Because I just thought at every other Cedar Fair Park I went to that had one, I thought it looked just so much better. Yeah. It it just looks so nice. And, like, yeah. it's it's a good and, it's a good addition. And I think it just pl plays with the characters better than, like, what is, what is Planet Snoopy, right? But like, Camp Snoopy is a summer camp. You get it. There's a theme. Like, Planet Snoopy is, like, everything Snoopy. And then I like yeah. the, like, Camp Snoopy. Like, this is camp this is like yeah planet snoopy's not a bad theme 
It's just no. Like, it's just I just think Camp Camp Snoopy is a better one. Yeah, I like. The That's camp. just my opinion. No. Yeah, I I think Camp. I would love to see him do like paint refreshes and stuff on Planet Snoopy like next year or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think for right now, Camp Snoopy is my favorite theme. Um, and then our last question, Wind asks, we see a new dining location coming in Camp Snoopy. What do you think will be offered there and what should be offered there? Do you think there could be more child or sensory friendly foods in the park? Well, to the last part of that question, I think that's what they're trying to do. Yeah, I think that's what um, they're trying to do. Putting this, putting a restaurant in Camp Snoopy, you know, this isn't going to be like, um, you know, like the well, like what they build at Cedar Point and the Boardwalk. This is definitely kid focused food. Yeah, I think that's a good move. Um, mm-hmm. I'm trying to think. I think one of the biggest things I've seen when I hear that like food isn't sensory friendly at the park, and this is something I've struggled with too. Like, um. Not all locations are the same. And, like, you want some variety to an extent. But when I'm like, okay, all of the chicken tenders in the park are a different kind of chicken tender, that really messes Mm. with you. Or, like, mac and cheese. Like, Coney Barbecue? Excellent mac and cheese. You go to the kids' area, and it's a different kind of mac and cheese. But then it makes sense because it's a kids' area. mac and cheese, isn't it? When I got it, it was like a creamy school lunch mac and cheese, but it wasn't oh, like the like okay. Coney barbecue mac and cheese. Mm-hmm. But the kid one is more sensory friendly because it doesn't have the breadcrumbs. Um, so sensory friendly, like what would give me some examples of what would be sensory friendly? Like um, texture, like texture is really really important. Mm-hmm. Um, to me, a big sensory thing is like it's the texture. If I don't expect something to like feel the way it does even if that should be how it feels if i don't expect it i won't eat it ever again um okay and then like if food smells different than it tastes that's always that's a big problem but i think that might be a me thing um no that's why i don't like coffee (laughs) yeah i love the way coffee smells i don't like the way it tastes i don't have a problem with the way it tastes but i can't stay in the way it smells Uh, that's just the opposite yeah, the opposite. Um, but yes, we did talk about like um the food the food there will be kid friendly. I think it's gonna be a lot of like um things you would expect a kid to pick to eat, like corn dogs. I hope it's not pizza, like you yeah. can get pizza at so many other places. Burgers. Yeah, let's not get... do yeah. Um, Leave the pizza to La Rosa's. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I'm interested in that topic, though. So there are there certain kinds of textures that are considered sensory friendly and <gasps> others that are not? I don't. I don't know, because I don't want to speak for everyone, because everybody's sensory needs are different. But like. Mm, sure. Fair enough. Like, because if you're like expecting a crunch, a crunchy food is good. Um, The gluten free chicken tenders at Potato Works or a sensory nightmare to me because it's like really? cornmeal for breading and it's just like crumbly on top of my chicken and i'm like this is mm, awful okay. and i'm like if you i was gluten-free i could uh, like obviously gluten-free people need something to eat um but to me it's just like awful for the texture mm. But yeah, I I think you're right. I think it's going to be things like corn dogs, uh, simple stuff for for kids. Um, probably camp themed type stuff where possible. Yeah. I'm looking up S'mores. sensory friendly food right now. I'm seeing like apples and carrots and roasted chickpeas. I don't know. I don't think I could do roasted chickpeas. You don't like chickpeas? No, I hate chickpeas. <laughs> Gotcha. I, I, let me check while you're doing that. Let me check and see because I thought we had another extra question. I really like creamy oh, textures. Creamy oh. textures are good. I sorry. Creamy I textures cream. are good. I've got one for you, and I know I was just looking, and I can't even remember. I'd have to pull it back up. But we do have a question from Coaster Crud here. Mm-hmm. It's was the Franklin statue that was in the Watchtower in the concept art on? site i don't believe it was yet no not yet it will be coming but it's not yet there yeah okay 
Yeah. And I think that was it. I don't know if I you got that's any it. others. Um, I don't think I got any last minute submissions. So I think, I think we're done, Larry. I, okay. Uh, Do we, are we asking each other questions? We, we gotta ask each other a question. Um, <laughs> one, sorry, I just, Every time we record, I impulsively want to grab this book and, like, flip to a page and do a dramatic reading of The Beast, too. At some point, you really should. I should. This is an Easter egg yeah. for when I do that. Yeah. At some point when Josh is gone, That's I'm going to do that. Like, super dramatic. Super dramatic. Um, it's a good book. It's a good from book. From what I remember. I like There's them. a description in the beginning of that book of him drinking an orange soda that they bought. Outside the Beast, that still sticks with me. Like, really? it makes me thirsty to think about this description. Now I want to get an orange soda and go ride the Beast. Yeah. These are Friday activities. I think it was an orange soda. It might have been a different kind of soda, but I'm pretty sure I don't sure know. I feel orange. like orange soda is a really specific thing to remember. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Sorry, I'm trying to think of a question. Because my question was going to be, you should read this book. And I'm like, well, Larry doesn't have this book in front of him. He can't do a dramatic reading. Um, I wish I could. Okay, if you could pick any ride at the park to us, like make them give a squishmallow to, what ride would you pick? Oh, and it has to be. Do they have a banshee? No. Why don't they have a why banshee? Why don't they have a banshee? We need a banshee. banshee. Okay, merch yeah. team, I give us a banshee. banshee squishmallow, even though that's a squishmallow Bam. problem and not a you problem. <laughs> Let's see, what's, uh, let me think for you. What's something in the park that you think needs a t-shirt that doesn't currently have one as far as you know? Well, my first answer is Foff. Because I have a long sleeve Flight of Fear shirt that they put out last year, but it's a long sleeve. And then the only other t-shirt that they have for it is one of those established shirts. So of course I own it. But I want like good flight of fear merch because it's an it's an alien theme. You know yeah. how much you can do with aliens? Like um otherwise, Backlot Stunt Coaster doesn't have any merch. You're right, it doesn't. That is weird. Um Adventure Express finally has merch. Invertigo doesn't have merch. I'm not surprised about that. I want an Invertigo shirt. Okay. I have um <laughs> Where is it? I have this pin from when they were doing, like, Project X for Invertigo. Like this. I think this would be fire oh, yeah, on yeah. a shirt. Yeah, that wouldn't be bad. Definitely also, be bad. the Flight of Fear one that they did would be really good on a shirt. I know these aren't <laughs> I focusing. I love like your King's Island stuff is always, like, within reach. There's Whenever very little of my, like, park this. stuff that's not in reach. Because um, <laughs> my whole desk area... Let's do a little. My whole desk area is all like park oh. stuff. Like, got my <laughs> Top Thrill Dragster Squish. I got my Steel Force. Got my. Um, this is from Cup Fusion. Mordorny <laughs> Park. Um, I have my books on nice. the shelf under this. There's a lot of park stuff in my room. Um, or in my Very office. Very good. I so, love it. Yeah, and then I have this like a little bin of pins. And I have other park stuff oh. other places. It's Sweet Spot. They were selling these for like a dollar during the 50th anniversary. So instead of putting candy okay. in there, I put pins. That's smart. That's smart. I like Just... it. <laughs> so I need to start a pin collection. I need to find a better way to like put my pins so that they're not just... I can't get any more pins because this box is full. And they you don't do sell like these a boxes. cork board. Yeah, that would be smart. That would be really smart, actually. You might lose the... I don't know what you do with the backs, though. Yeah, because, like, on the 50th ones, they have, like, ride information on them. So, like, I wouldn't mm -hmm. want to lose those. I'd have to, like, yeah, pin maybe them not. Maybe. through, like, a bobby pin. Or not a bobby pin, a thumbtack. And, like, hang it off there so, like, it's not, like, actually stuck in there. There you go. Yeah. Well... <laughs> Larry, that's the end of the episode. Oh, well. So. Orion's a giga. Orion's a giga. Quad down. Quad down out. Out. <laughs> oh, no. Ah. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, no.